everybody. Uh, recording day is coming to you from the oven that is called Hemet, but I'm glad that you guys uh, could join with me again today. Uh, I have an opening question for you. Can that which is which was good become bad? And we'll we'll talk about that in a moment. But let's let's go ahead and pray before we get there. Lord, uh, we desire to become more like you. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would help us in doing that. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so when we are introduced to King Hezekiah in the Old Testament, it's, it's normal for the writer to tell us whether that king, uh, a king, followed you know, the Lord or did not follow the Lord. And Hezekiah did follow the Lord and he removed many of the wrong practices that were found in the land of Israel at that time. And here's what it says in 2 Kings 18.4, He, Hezekiah, removed the high places and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah, and he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses made. For until those days the people of Israel had made offerings to it, and it was called Nehushtan. So did you catch what it said there? It said that the people were making an offering, probably incense, to the bronze snake that Moses made in the wilderness. Now let that sink in for a minute. The writer is referring to a story about 700 years before Hezekiah's time. And if you don't remember this story, it's, it's found in Numbers chapter 21. And there was a, a plague of serpents in the, the Israel wilderness camp. And at God's command, Moses made a, a bronze serp serpent to be put on a pole for the nation to look at and to be spared from death, from snake bites. And looking upon the serpent, well, it was, it was a lot better than a vaccine. It was 100% effective. And it was a beautiful deliverance for the people of Israel. And we are also told in John 3, 14 and 15, that it was even a representation of Jesus Christ on the cross. And we can look to Jesus who was made to be sin and be delivered from the bite of the serpent himself. So apparently the Israelites held on to this bronze serpent and it may have ended up in the temple area at some point. So what happened here? How did something so good turn so bad? And we see in places in the Bible where it was good and right to have reminders of what the work that the Lord had done. In fact, many of those reminders were commanded by God. For example, there were items that went into the Ark of the Covenant, uh, Aaron's staff, a jar of, of manna, and there was a stack of 12 stones after they crossed the, the Jordan. Uh, in fact, the Israelites would get themselves into trouble when, uh, with God when they didn't remember what God had done for them. So how did this bronze serpent become an object of worship? Well, Chuck Smith talks about how when we turn to idol worship, it tells us a couple things. It tells us that we have lost the consciousness of the presence of God and the power in the healing uh, for the people in this story was the presence of God, not the serpent. And yet the people lost their consciousness of the presence of God. And the second thing it tells us is that somehow man is longing to regain that which he lost. And it's not just Israel that struggled with this, it's the church also, uh, through the years and, and even today. And we remember the great things that have happened in the past when God displayed his power in a mighty way, but we have slowly lost our consciousness of God and we start to long for what has been lost. It becomes easy to exalt the people or avenues that God used to work mighty things instead of exalting God himself. So let's be clear. God is more than sufficient in the past and for the present and for the future. 
We remember what he has done in the past and we glorify him for his mighty deeds. We also need to have that day-to-day -day trust that he can and will work in our time as well. We need a forward-looking, active faith in God and the anticipation that he is not confined to just memories. So let's encourage one another in that kind of faith. Let's go ahead and close in prayer. Lord, I pray that the trappings that we can fall into uh, by making idols of things in the past, even if it's uh, the way that you worked, Lord, I pray that you would rescue us from that. Uh, please let us, Lord, look to your presence day by day here in the present and Lord, know that you are sufficient. And I pray that you would just do all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys, we will see you next time. God bless.